All right, so you're thinking about doing a move up buy. That's an upgrade in homes is what we call a move up buy. So that's when you're gonna either be selling or potentially keeping as a rental, your, you know, your starter house a little bit smaller and you're getting into a larger house to be more suitable for your family or yourself um, and doing a move up buy. So in this video, if you're thinking about doing that, this is definitely the video for you. In this video, we're gonna go through the six different ways that you can actually do a move up buy um, and what are all the intricacies of the ways to do it. This is a complicated maneuver to make and so it's important to know um, the benefits and downsides of each different option of the six options and also some general practices and things that'll help you along your way for the potential as you're thinking through this potential move it by so stick around we're gonna get after it right now All right, so first off, I'm just gonna name off all six of the ways that you can do it, and then we'll have them segmented on the bottom here um, for you to actually search through them. But I will go through each one and go through the pros and cons, and then kind of finish with some general ideas, um, general guidelines and things like that. So hopefully it'll be helpful for you guys. All right, so number one is you can buy and then sell. And there's really three different versions of this, so these take up the first three options. You can just buy and then sell, that's the first one. You can um, buy and then actually just rent your home. So getting your dream home, but then keeping your other home. The third one is you can get some sort of bridge financing, buy and then sell. So all three within are the same idea, buying and selling, just three different ways of doing that. Number four and number five are gonna be selling first and buying second. So you can either sell your home first and then do some sort of short-term rental or a potentially a seller rent back period. We'll talk about that nuance here in a minute um, and then purchase your home. So that's number uh, four. Number five is gonna be actually selling contingent which is where you sell your home, you put your home on the market contingent upon you finding a suitable house for you to buy. So that's number five. And number six is gonna be the opposite of that buying contingent, which actually should be lumped with the, the top versions, number one, two, and three, because you're technically buying first. But really in this one, when you're doing the contingent options, number five and six, you're essentially doing things at the exact same time. Buying contingent or selling contingent, you're really doing these two deals, like they're both in escrow at the same time. Um, so we'll go through the benefits and downsides of those here next. So, all right, option number one is absolutely my favorite option if people can do it, if they can afford to do it, because usually it's a financial barrier to doing it. So the first option again was buy first, sell second. Three reasons why I absolutely love this way best. Number one is that you have all the time and freedom in your shopping. There's nothing holding you back from waiting uh, for the right home to come up. So you could you could find it in a week or you could find it in two years. It doesn't matter. You're just, you're ready to go. You're pre-approved. You're waiting, you're shopping, you're shopping, you're shopping, you're waiting. You find your house, boom, you find it. You make your offer and then you move in. So that's how that process works as far as the buying side. Um, so there's nothing holding you back or pushing you forward on the purchase. You're just waiting for your dream home. So that's the reason I like it, number one. Number two is that you only have to move once. So you'll find in a couple of these other scenarios, you really have to move twice. You have to get out of the house, go somewhere else, then go to a new house. So depending on which one you choose, you may be moving twice. In this scenario, you just move once. Um, and so it's a relatively seamless process for you. You're just, it's almost like you're just a first time home buyer. Like you were living at your parents or something or renting and you're looking for a house and once you find it, you buy it, then you move in. You move in there, that's it, one move, easy. And the third reason that I absolutely love this one is that you're selling a vacant home. So because you're gonna be buying the new house and then selling the old house and you're not doing, you're not selling the old house until you've moved into the new house, it's great because you're selling the vacant home. Now selling a vacant home has a lot of advantages for everyone involved. For the homeowner specifically, it's just a lot less stressful. Selling a home that's owner occupied is very difficult for the, the homeowner. You know, it's about the same for me, no big deal as the realtor, but you know, um, obviously you have to get the home prepped and stuff like that. So it's a little bit harder with all your furniture and clothes and, uh, and stuff like that. So getting it market ready, certainly more difficult when it's occupied and then certainly more difficult to show when it's occupied as well for the homeowner specifically. So if we have showing at 2 PM, you know, we just did all this prep to get it ready for pictures. First showings at two, you better make sure it looks the same as it did in pictures at two. So dishes need to be done, all that kind of stuff. So dealing with an on the market, on the market home while you live there is difficult for the seller itself. Um, so 
the fact that you get to sell it vacant is a very good advantage. So buy first, sell second. Awesome. Again, you get to take your time in your purchase. You then get to only move one time, seamless move, and then you get to prepare and sell a vacant home on the back end there when you know you're already moved in, happy in your new house. And the great part is if you hire a good realtor, hopefully, you know, myself, uh, if you're in, in my area, they'll take care of the whole prep for you too. So you, for you, the seller, it's really just like, hey, find our dream home and move in. Once that's it, it's like, hey, Brad, here's the keys. Get the carpet done, get the paint, whatever. You know, we get it ready for the market. That's what we do. So the least stressful for sure for the homeowner. Number two, the second way to do this thing um, is a similar idea, a little bit more work, but I did say my favorite way with this the, was the first way is more seamless. This is actually my favorite, favorite way because it becomes, it makes you a real estate investor. So this way is where you um, buy your new home and then you actually rent out your other home, your, your first home that you bought. This is amazing because you're building your portfolio, getting into real estate investing. If you guys have watched my stuff before, you know that I love real estate investing and it's a passion of mine. I think everyone should do it. This is the absolute best way to get into investing is just by buying your homes for low down payments and then actually instead of selling them to get your, your upgrade home, you just keep them along the way. So you do this every few years, all of a sudden, 20 years down the road, you got 10 different houses, um, hopefully cash flowing and changing your financial future and your wealth. So this one's great. <clears throat> so how this one works is you need to get pre-approved with a basic rental analysis on your current home. So if your home over here, the one that you live in right now, it rents for $2,500. That's what the so your realtor will do an analysis. Okay, it rents for $2,500. We send that to the lender. They then can usually take per lender dependent um, about 70% of that income and take it off your debt to income ratio. Because remember, what when you're keeping this house, you're still keeping this mortgage, this loan, unless you own it in cash. Um, so because of that, it's usually restricting a lot, a very restricting for you to actually buy a new house because you're already paying maybe three grand a month on this house potentially or whatever you're paying, 2000 and so it makes it harder to qualify for this new house. So we can offset the debt by getting a tenant in there and having a lease. So the lender will kind of do the math and figure all that out and we'll figure out, okay, here's what you can buy, here's what we can rent it for, here's how that affects debt to income. So now we have our new purchase price for our shop. From there, super simple. We're just, we're just buyers in the market, just like if you were first timer in any other situation. Um, so we'd shop, 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 offer, offer, whatever. Eventually you'd find your house, we'd make an offer, we would close on that house, get into that house. Now, there is one caveat, you would need to, in most cases, so per lender, talk to them each, but a lot of times you have to have your lease signed by the new tenant to offset that debt by the time you close this house. So the most recent one I did, um, the best way to do this was we kind of started prepping their home a little bit beforehand, but what we did was, a, um, a little bit longer of a closing period, about a 40 day close instead of a 30 day close for the house that we were buying. That gave the my client more time to get a tenant for their other house. So let's just say, you know, on a Monday, we made an offer on our new house right here to get. They said, yes, we got under contract. Immediately, the next day, we put this rental up on the market for a rental. And so we had to kind of show a little bit of buyers or uh, I guess tenants that house as well. Luckily in this case, within about a week, we had that one secured for the amount that we had planned on. Um, so we had a lease signed, which was able to make us close on this one. So that's why this one's amazing for the investment side. But of course, as far as stress goes, nothing beats that first option where you buy first and sell second, um, because there's just a little bit more work on this one. You do have to get your property ready to rent. Um, and then you also have to find the tenant. You got to make sure you find them. If you don't, it could affect the potential purchase of your dream home. Number three, also one of my favorite ways, <laughs> these are all good ways to do it. It's just best fit for you. And for most of my clients, we just talk about what these are and kind of what, what is the best fit for you? What do you see yourself doing? Um, so number three is getting some sort of a bridge loan to so that you can end up doing option number one. Because most people can't do option number one. Option one, remember, you have to qualify for a new house while you still have your other house. And so a lot of people can't do that or they need significant amount of money from the house. They need the equity. Let's say that you were a first timer six years ago, you bought your house for 300,000 in rent. And that's like, that, that's my story. That's what I did. Um, and then, you know, now that house is worth 600, which is also true 650, something like that. So you have this $300,000. You could really use that money to then put on a down payment to then buy like your $900,000 house or your million dollar house. And you're keeping your payment um, a little bit lower by putting a big down payment down in that case. So a lot of people doing a move up buy are gonna take the equity 
they need to take the equity to then buy this house because they probably wouldn't qualify for this million dollar house if they didn't have this $300,000 down payment. Um, so that's what a lot of my move it buyers, um, that's the situation they're in. They need this equity to buy this house. And so in that case, you can't do option number one, which is my the, the best, smoothest option, which is just buy and sell because you can't qualify. So we need to get that money out somehow. So the way that you can, the couple of ways that you can get the money out, this option would be a bridge loan. So we have a couple of products with the, some of the partners that we work with, but long story short, we're tapping into this equity, this $300,000 to then be able to go ahead and buy this house, but, but not buying it contingent, which is a different one later. Um, so we're kind of being able to bypass the whole contingent part because we do have a guaranteed offer on this house um, and we're getting cash out of it. Um, so long story short, it's basically a loan. You're getting money from the house so that you can qualify to buy that million dollar house. And then in that case, as far as the process for you, um, you know, it's similar to the first one. It's just that you're financing a little bit different way. So you're gonna shop, 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 take your time. You're gonna buy the house, you're gonna close on the house, um, and then you're, you're gonna move into the house. So again, only one move in this situation. And then once you move in, you're gonna prep and sell the house that you just left. So option number four is where you actually sell first and then buy. So in this case, just how it looks is you're gonna actually prep your house for the market, you're gonna put it on the market, you're gonna actually sell it. As soon as you sell it, you're going to, obviously you have to have some sort of place to live because once you sell it, you're probably gonna get someone to live that's gonna move into the house. <laughs> and so you probably wanna do some sort of like short-term rental. You could get into a year rental lease, something like that, but a lot of my clients that are doing this option, they'd rather just do like a short-term rental because they're not planning on renting for a long time just while they shop for a home, maybe a month to month type lease. So this one is, is definitely good. The, the, the upside to this one, I think, is that you actually know what you're gonna sell your house for. All those, you know, buying first and selling second options, those first three, technically you're still guessing what your house is gonna sell for. So maybe like, obviously you can, the lender like approved you for this amount, so obviously you can buy this house, but maybe you had in your mind, you kind of really thought you would need to get 300,000 net proceeds from this sale and you know you don't know that you're going to get that so maybe you only get 280,000 cuz the market you know it just didn't sell for as much as you thought um, so one of the benefits of doing the sell first is that you really know exactly what you're working with you're not shopping to buy until you sold this house so you already know how much money did i make um, cuz obviously if you're doing this method that means that you need the money from your house to buy the next house that's why this option works for you so by getting that money first it's kind of nice because you know exactly what you're working with okay downsides would be that you have to be a renter for a little bit so you might do you know, hotel airbnbs whatever it is a long term lease not that fun right and then it has the downside of you actually do move twice because the rental's not your dream home you're still going to be shopping so you have to move twice. You have to move out of your house you sold into the rental. Once you do buy, you gotta move again. So two moves, moving sucks. So that's why this option, the downside of this option is that you do have to move twice, which is no fun sometimes. Now there is one um, potential option that could maybe get you to not move twice, but that would be when you um, get a seller rent back period. So in some markets when it's hot, you can definitely do this. And when it's a cold market, you definitely cannot. It kind of just depends. I mean, you, you always can, but this is where you request that the buyer doesn't have the possession date on the closing date. They have a delayed possession and a seller rent back period where you, the seller, have time to actually stay in the property for an extended amount of time, whatever is in the contract. So maybe it's 30, maybe it's 45 days, maybe it's 10. Uh, but that gives you some more time to actually do your shopping. If you time it correctly and you have a 60 day rent back period, very likely that you can actually only move the once and you can kind of be doing this hybrid model where you're really doing a contingent type deal, but you're, you're not actually doing it that way. So anyway, selling first and then buying with some sort of short term rental um, in between, whether it's at your own house or at an actual Airbnb or something else. Let's talk about selling contingent real quick too, along with this last one about selling first and buying second. Now selling contingent, um, I'm just not a big fan of. I wanted to put it in here because it is an option. I think people did it in real estate back before I was in real estate. I've been in it since 2017, um, so about seven years. I just don't think it makes a lot of sense because not a lot of people, so here's what, here's what you do. You would put your house on the market for sale. But then if someone, a buyer wanted to buy it, you could accept that with the contingency that you needed to find a suitable house for you to buy and you need to close on that house. So they're not gonna get this house unless you get this house. 
um, which I think is just tough for buyers to swallow because they're kind of like, they're putting their search on hold. They might, they know that you're not gonna find a house overnight. So it might take you 60 days or something like that, 90 days. Um, so the reason I don't love the, the idea is because it's gonna be harder to sell your home. If you're selling contingent, you're gonna be limiting the buyers that are willing to do that. Most buyers wanna move in right away, right? Or, or, or not just they wanna move in, but they wanna know that they're buying your house. I mean, once they have a contract, they wanna know that they're for sure buying your house, pending you know whatever else happens, the inspection or like their um, financing. But like as far as the seller goes, they wanna make sure that you're tied to selling this home. They don't wanna like find out three weeks later or two months later, uh, we didn't really find a house we liked, so we're just gonna stay here, right? Kind of wasted everyone's time. So that's why I don't like these ones, but um, it's certainly an option. Uh, you do only have to move once, so it does have some benefits because uh, you're kind of doing them at the same time. So both these contingent options where you're selling contingent and buying contingent, you're doing them at the exact same time. So you're selling your house contingent, you get a contract, then you're shopping, shopping, shopping for your new house. You're gonna make an offer on that house, um, and then you know they're they're in escrow at the same time. So that's how that one works. Okay, not my favorite one. I have never done it. I don't recommend it either. Okay, my last option here, which I think was six, is what I said, is gonna be buying contingent. Now this option I've done many times, and I think it's one of the best options for people who are doing an upgrade buy that are not able to qualify for the new house without selling their old house. Um, but again, this the bridge loan um, option is like kind of replacing this option. But this is where you, the key here is that you have to prep your house first. So a quick overview of how this works is that you're gonna be shopping for your new house. You're gonna make an offer, you're gonna put a, put a contract together to buy that property, but it's gonna be contingent upon the sale of your home. So the seller accepts that one, and then um, the key here is that within five days, usually, sometimes 10, depending on the contract, you have to list your house. So again, these are happening at the same time. So in real time, if this was a Monday right now, and you made an offer on this house right here to, to buy, and they said yes, then you know your house is gonna be listed by Friday. So the real key with this situation, and when I've done this with my clients, is that you have to prepare. So before we shop for houses, it actually starts with prepping the listing, your house that you're in right now. It doesn't have to be perfect because we have some time. Um, so like the deep clean in the photos and the video, we'll do that right before listing. But it does need to be decluttered and like basically ready to go, any of the repairs. So obviously work with your agent on like what the prep work is, but in general, the idea is that you know about what you're gonna get for this house, what it's worth, and what kind of prep we need to do, and we're doing that prep. Once that house is ready, that's when we have to go ahead to, to shop because this one goes quickly. Again, you find your house and then all of a sudden the next day you're writing an offer and then all of a sudden five days later, you gotta list your house and now you're on the market. These two are both in escrow at the same time. So I love this option because it's a way to not, um, you know, have to get the bridge loan or anything like that and you, you, you're able to only move one time. But it is a highly stressful situation because you have these two things going on at once. Uh, one deal in real estate is, difficult for people who are not doing it every day. And so it is a little bit added stress because you have these two deals going on at the same time. Selling a house is a little bit stressful and the key is like you're not gonna buy this new house unless this house sells and unless it sells for a certain amount that you know that you need. So it can be, again, a little bit stressful. That would be the downside. And the other uh, upside is that you also get to take your time in shopping. So once you have that property prepped, you can take your time in shopping. Um, there's nothing really holding you up. Like when you sell contingent, you have to buy quickly, right? If you have a rent back period for 30 days, you know you need to find a house and ride an offer like ASAP. Um, so there's kind of that um, that push to do things. So this one's nice because you do have a little bit um, of leniency on finding the right home and then you just sell your property when you're ready. So those are the six options, you guys. Uh, like I said, I think to recap, um, you know, option one, if you're gonna be selling your property, is the best if you can do it. If you can't do it, option two is probably second best. That's where you use the bridge loan. A contingent offer, buying contingent is another great option in a balanced market. The tricky part is if it's a really, really hot market like it was last spring, sellers were not accepting contingent offers, so the bridge loan is how you can actually still get that dream home um, without being contingent. So that's some of my favorite options. 
the selling first and buying with the rental in the in the middle is also a good option because you know what you're going to get. Again, it really depends on what if you've watched this whole video, that would be awesome. Um, and I think by this time, you and your head already know. And that's how most people are like, I tell them the options and they're like, OK, that sounds like probably the best for us. So they already kind of know and I can help guide. Um, but I do think that those first couple options are probably, in most cases, the best option for people. I think the selling first one's a little bit more difficult. People don't like to move twice. That's the main downside to that one. Couple other things to mention. So these are general. When you're doing a move up buy, keep in mind, what's most important is getting a good price on the purchase price of the new house, right? Which is the opposite of someone who's doing a downsizing. That's why it's important to have a good strategy on do you buy first and sell first? Uh, well, you know, what do you do? It's because these are different purchase prices, right? So in my example that I gave earlier, your uh, starter house you bought for 300,000, you have $300,000 equity in it, you're gonna sell it for 600, but you're gonna be buying your million dollar house. And so when it comes to the $600,000 house and the million dollar house, um, whether the market goes up or down a certain percentage, let's say 10%, it goes down 10% um, or goes up 10%, it's a bigger, difference on a million than it is 600,000. So we always give more weight and value to the, the higher purchase price. Um, so that's what you should be focusing on if you're in an upgrade situation. Reverse effect, if you're in a downsize situation like my mom did this last year, we were solely focused on let's get the highest price we can for the house we're selling. We sold for over 1.5 in Sammamish and then we bought in Covington um, after that. And so for that one, it was important to time the market for getting the highest sales price um, and not so much time it for the, the purchase because it's a lower amount. So we can't, of course, predict the market, but if the market goes um, down 5% or up 5%, it has a bigger impact on the bigger number. So that's why that should be your focus. So in other words, in a market win right now, upgrade buying, you'd probably wanna buy as soon as possible because prices are currently going up right now. So if we were in a declining market and prices were going you know, down, you potentially could wait. Um, it's still like kind of a timing the market thing. So I'd still, still like to advise people to do what's best on their timeline based on like their life, just because we can't actually time the market. I will give you advice and things and what I think. Um, some things are kind of universal, like spring versus summer versus winter versus fall. You know, though there there is seasons to real estate, so we can kind of semi predict kind of how things are gonna be going and what might be best for you. But again, the little tidbit, the general advice is that we wanna focus on the highest priced property. So in a move up buy, that would be the one you're buying. Um, so getting a good deal on that one is more important than selling your house for a top dollar. It, 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 both would be obviously ideal, but some advice there. So anyway, those are the ways that you can do it. If you guys um, want to reach out to find out more about um, you know, what the best option is for you, I'm happy to talk about that with you. So feel free to reach out in the Calendly link or something down below. Um, also, if you're interested in the Bridge Loan program, it is very unique. It, it really deserves a second video. So I'll do another video on that and we'll link that one right here to talk to you about how you can actually buy your dream home without being contingent, but while still getting all that money of equity out of your current home. Uh, so thanks for watching, guys. If you uh, got some value from this one, definitely hit the subscribe, like, you know, all that kind of stuff, notifications, and uh, reach out. All the links are below when you're ready to chat some more real estate.